You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. Welcome back to Miles from Main Street. This week, we're covering not only Mickey's very merry Christmas party, but everything you can do to celebrate the holidays at Walt Disney World. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we thank you. This here is the world of Christmas. Hello, I am Brian, and I am joined again this week. Once again, Stuart, thank you for joining me. Welcome back. Absolutely, Brian. So glad to have you. It's always a great time speaking with you. Um, All right, before we get too far into this, please like and subscribe to the show on your podcast app or on YouTube, and be sure to share it out. Remember, new episodes every Tuesday and on Fridays, find the Disney Dash, a short form podcast with my daughter Mia, where she is talking Disney from A to Z, but from a kid's perspective. So, Stuart, so glad to have you back. How are you doing? Hey, not too bad. How are you? You know, doing well, doing well. As good as uh, can be expected. We have been online together for 25 minutes already. We have talked the gamut of Disney, and I'm wishing we would have just hit that record button and let it go. You know, you live and learn, right? You live and learn. (laughs) Maybe next time. I think uh, we've decided, Stuart, you're going to be more of a regular around here. Well, you know, it's good to be regular, right? (laughs) Well, we're glad to have you. So Um, I do have an email here that I got from Chris Meza who was listening to the Run Disney episode that just came out. Um, Love the Run Disney episode when he's talking about running down Main Street. Seriously got teary-eyed, remembering doing that for the Princess Half a few years ago. He's so right about the community, too. It's the best. I haven't had a chance to get into the A to Z episodes, but I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for that message. So glad to hear from you and so glad that you're enjoying the episode. I really appreciate you listening. Um, it was it was great talking to Tony and learning about Run Disney. I've, you know, I, as I said, I've talked to people here and there about it, but never in depth like we did with Tony. So if you haven't heard that episode, definitely go back and listen to that episode. It's uh, not only entertaining and informative but also inspiring there he has a lot to say in there on how to help you get started running so yeah i i I used to run a lot and listening to his episode it's like huh maybe that would be nice but then i realized no probably not i'm i'm i don't run anymore (laughs) but it'd be cool to run around disney right that would be cool it would yeah i would love to do it um and i need to i need to start trying to do something about that i think (laughs) yeah that's true my uh (laughs) my mother-in-law runs has done the los An or the anaheim run disney for a long long time and i think it was maybe maybe covid maybe right after um she couldn't do it anymore and she lost her legendary status or whatever it was she had done all of them up until that point and then she had to lose it so that kind of sucked but otherwise, she was real, you know, always there. And that, that was a fun. I got to uh, live through that a couple of times. Yeah, I would like to uh, I would like to try it at least once and see how it goes. Um, obviously, I need a little training. You know, we were down there at the end of October and we were um, we were, you know, going around different places. And I believe it's world drive is where we were and you would see the tents and tables set ready for the half marathon day and uh, it, it it sounds like it's pretty interesting so i mean a half marathon isn't that hard. it's all hard right i'm not saying it's not that, i'm not going to say it's not that hard but you know i i mean 
I've run half marathons with with little to to less training than you should. So, you know, it might hurt the day, but you look where you're running. I mean, you're in Disneyland or World or wherever. Right. Yeah. We did do a virtual 5K uh, a couple of summers ago. Um, it was kind of underwhelming because it was like, all right, we're going to go get this done. And then you get home and there's like no celebration at the end. So, right. You know, <laughs> right. Here, honey, here's your medal that they sent me for no reason <laughs> other than that right. I paid them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, anyway, holidays. Let's talk holidays at Disney World. Uh, yes. Tammy and I got to go down last year on a trip with Mikhailo and Kristen. Um, you can find that review episode um, from December of last year. We had a really good time. I kind of wanted to just kind of do kind of a guide to Disney Christmas or Disney holidays, right? So <clears throat> let's start with the big one, the big Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party. I mean, this is the party that started it all, right? They they did one um, in the 70s just to try it out. Uh, and it has gone through several iterations until we get to now. And this is the big party that everyone loves to go to. Um, there's a there's an awesome parade. There's fireworks. There's free cookies. Have you had the opportunity, Stuart? I have not. Uh, every if we've gotten down there during that time of year, that festive time of year. Um, <laughs> that time of year <laughs> right uh <laughs> it's always been like oh that'd be so cool but you know we have you know this that and this and that and this and that and and it's also like like we just said that time of year and so mm -hmm. when you have little kids it's kind of hard to convince them that hey let's also go to this party in the middle of the night <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately i think it would be a fun thing but i I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'd want to take my kids. I think they'd have a blast. I would want to not have to parent for five minutes. That's what I would want. <laughs> I can definitely understand that. Um, on this last trip, it's the first time I had done a party without kids. And it it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. a, def a different feel. We had a really, really good time. Um, we did the Jingle Cruise, which... We're going to talk about things during the day, and that's, you know, the main thing during the day is the Jingle Cruise. Um, but we were, you know, we were able to snack. Uh, we were able to get cookies. I was getting extra cookies because my kids wanted me to bring cookies home. So mm -hmm. I think we ended up with about 35 cookies by the end of the night that I ended up bringing most of home. Because um, we were eating so many other snacks, I didn't want to eat the, the cookies while we were in the park. So, um, and a lot of the, a lot, of, I mean, a lot of the treats that they have during the party are sweet treats. So why, why dig into the cookies when you're already eating cookies, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I like, we had a great time at that party. We all dressed with the same type of Hawaiian style shirt. And yeah, you know, I, that's my one recommendation. If, if you're going with a group, dress in something fun it doesn't have to be a costume it doesn't have to be outrageous you know all we did was we had matching hawaiian shirts that had mickey and and the gang in santa hats on it right and people just love that um it feels like it's one of those the more you put into it the better off you're gonna be the better off you're gonna have fun and that's i think that's an important part of it the more you put into it the better it's gonna be yeah, and we definitely the the one thing that I have with these parties is that it's um special events where you've got the parade, you've got the fireworks, you've got um I'm forgetting something. Oh, a stage show. Um, you know, and you've special got, meet and greets, right? But yeah, that and that's the thing is you've got the special characters mm -hmm. and you can get on rides all night. You can walk on anything you want all night. Um, save for maybe one or two, um, but the that's not what you're there for. You're there for these events, and you're there for these meet and greets. And the problem I have is that I don't want to wait an hour or more to meet a character. I love meeting characters. I we had, 
at this party I went to um, see what the line was like for the seven dwarfs. It was more than 45 minutes. I looked in there and saw people sitting on the ground. And I'm like, nope, I'm not doing that. There's too much other stuff we want yeah. than to waste an hour standing in line. Um, so <laughs> that's the one thing is like, why do I do these? I don't think I've met any characters at these parties. Well, we did end up meeting Jack and Sally that night. The line was pretty short near the end of the night. So we did get to do that. Um, and it was well worth it. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things for me anyway. And you got to have your priorities when you do these parties as to what you want to do. So, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing, right? And it's, it's a bigger expense too. It's another hundred dollars per person or whatever it is, right? It's not like just a quick little add on. So you do have to prioritize you know, what's your, what's your priority to that? I've, I've heard other travel agents and, and advisors and people in the know talk about, you know, use that day as a, if you're going to buy tickets to that thing, count it as a day and then put the pool, put a pool day on top of it. Right. So you go to the pool all morning you stay at the resort all morning and then you go on to your, um, uh, you know, your party at night. And that makes a lot of sense. I could, I could see doing that, but. And I can tell you that from experience, the first two Halloween parties that we did, excuse me, I have got this nasty tickle in my throat. That's okay. It's better to be tickled in your throat than I guess other places. Uh, I, uh, I, I, the first two parties we did, which were Halloween parties, we went all day. We rope dropped and flew, you know, slid right into the party and you get to 10 o'clock and you watch fireworks and you're done. Like you don't, mm-hmm. you don't want to do much. You know, for me, I'm on Disney energy. I'll go all night if I need to. But, you know, I, I always wanted to do one of those 24 hour days when they used to keep the park open all night long. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to do something like that. And now they haven't. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> you know, uh, I really think the best way to do a party is just focus on the party. So Mm -hmm. spend your day relaxing, sleeping in, you know, let the kids swim a little bit and then hit that party at four o'clock because you get in early. You can do a few things in the park and then it's party time. And I really think that you set yourself up for success then. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. It does. So anyway, uh, during the day at the Magic Kingdom, um, if you don't have a party ticket, you can do Jingle Cruise. That is an all-day affair. Um, the narration's different. The sets are set up differently. They've got it's all Christmas or holiday related in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so that is kind of the main event, I guess, of Christmas in um, Magic Kingdom. But they've also got great decor. Uh, Go ahead. I was going to say the, the the transformation from Halloween to Christmas at the Magic Kingdom is like top notch, and I I love what I love doing walking around, you know, any of those parks, um, is looking at the decorations, is is you know seeing yes. Main Street decked out and seeing you know being there lucky enough to see the Snope and and stuff like that. I mean, I know that's a party thing, but um, I I feel like it happened once and I was there, or or I imagined it. I don't know, but it's still one of those awesome things that that is stuck in my head. And so I, you know that Stuart froze up there for a second. So um, you were talking about the decor and how awesome it is. You know, when we were there on this last trip, um, if if you guys go back and listen to the trip report we just did, I neglected to mention our last day. And we went um, to Ohana for breakfast that morning. But on the way there, we walked past the Magic Kingdom gate because we took a bus over to Magic Kingdom and then got on the monorail. So walking past the gate, 
we were just, you know, like all week we had been doing that. We had done that a ton. And so I was just kind of head down walking along. I may have even been looking at my phone. I don't remember. I wasn't really thinking about it, but it was November 1st at this point. And I heard somebody say Christmas and I looked up and everything was red and green, not brown and orange. And I'm like, this is so cool. And they had a photo pass photographer out in front by the topiaries of Mickey and Minnie. And I'm like, we need to get this picture, but we didn't have time to stop then. So we came back later. The line was actually longer. I thought it would be shorter because we came back at like one and I expected it to be shorter than at open when we were walking by. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but well, that was your first mistake. Right? I know. Like, I don't understand that, but anyway, it didn't take long. Um, but yeah, it was really neat. Just, to, just there seeing that mm-hmm. they didn't have the tree up in the magic kingdom yet. Um, but we could see a little bit down main street, you know, as you're taking the monorail um, and they had all the, holly and everything up on the on main street so it was it was just incredible like i was always like yeah you know they they do this amazing transition but you know like i wasn't thinking like it was a that big of a deal but to see it in person holy cow like that and was- to see it go from because you were there you know the third you were there the 31st and then you were there the first so to see it go from halloween to christmas in one day is yeah. is pretty amazing yeah. Yeah, it was incredible to to see that. Um but yeah, so you know like they they have a great Christmas tree in Town Square mm-hmm. that um is great to take pictures with. Um you know, I think most of the holiday stuff is going to be on Main Street um and then Jingle Cruise. They don't it really fill the rest of the park with that. Um but you might see things here and there and it's just it's great to be in the magic kingdom with that decor Mm -hmm. whether it's a party or not i also i don't know if we'll get to it but i also love the decor in um hollywood studios i think there's something about that mid-century vibe with santa hats all over the place and the santa hat on gertie and all that sort of stuff that that just just tickles my fancy. Um, yes, not I, so- totally, I totally agree with that. Yeah. It, the, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I was, I was going to also say the, the Epcot stuff I like, but there's something about just Sunset and Vine, Santa Hat on Gertie. I don't know. No, I completely agree. And over by Gertie, there's also a nice, beautiful Christmas tree there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the ornaments floating in the in Echo Lake. You've got those old timey type of um, uh, I don't know what to call it. Like they're doll type things. They're like porcelain doll type things, but they're ornament. You know, they're decor that are in those grassy areas mm-hmm. that they have throughout the park and. You know, that and the, just the old time Santa like sign that they put on the light poles mm-hmm. coming, up, coming up Hollywood Boulevard. Like, that's just awesome. Like, it's so cool yeah. to see. Um, it hits that yeah. nostalgia button that I didn't know that I had until I see it and go, oh, yeah, this is how Christmas should be. So. <laughs> yeah, it's totally awesome. Um, and, you know, along with Hollywood Studios, like, you know, they do have that sunset season greetings on Tower of Terror in the evening, so you can go and do that um, as well. But they've added Jollywood Nights, and this is mm-hmm. the second year for it. Um, and by all accounts, it's quite awesome. Yeah, I've heard really good things. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know that again. I Again, I don't know that I that I drop down this money for it but i think if i were to between the two parties that would be the one that i would put more effort into trying to get to jollywood yeah okay uh you know my wife and i were talking about it and i think it's something that we definitely want to do but i don't know that we need to have kids with us 
Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I <laughs> I mean, I, I know it might sound like I'm like, don't take your kids to these things. And I don't think that's what I'm trying to say, but I, <laughs> it definitely could be. <laughs> I would definitely take my kids to the Halloween or the Christmas party for sure. And yeah, and yeah great time with us at the Halloween party this time around. Um, so I, I have no problem with that. I think taking kids to the, to it is great as long as you're prepared. Yeah. I, I, I think people should take their kids. What I'm saying is I'm selfish and I don't want to take <laughs> my kids. <laughs> totally understand. Got it. Um, when I'm talking Jollywood nights though, I don't know that you want to have your kids there it seems and this is the report that i've that we've been getting from people as well is that this is more of an a an adult soiree if i can use that word right like this is dress up a little bit have mm -hmm. a couple have a cocktail or two you know they have the tip top club where mm -hmm. you get a drink and you dance to jazz they have the um special event that's going on in the hollywood brown derby where you go in and you have special food and it's a little more swank you know um the rides aren't anything extra they're just the same thing but you can jump on some rides um tons of character meet and greets mm -hmm. uh, you know santa duffy um, and those meet and greets like that would definitely fit the kid but beyond that you've got the nightmare before christmas show you've got the stage show um i'm not sure what they call it now it's something merriment or i can't remember exactly but the one at the beauty and the beast stage it's got the muppets involved um which i've tried to teach my kids about the muppets i don't know how much they care <laughs> well here, here's my 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 worry about the Muppets is that they're just not relevant anymore. They need to come out with another Muppet movie. And and no, no, Muppets Most Wanted was not a good Muppet movie. They need to come out with another like no, Muppet it was Christmas the Carol. That. The Muppets before that. The was Muppets was great. Yes, we and, could get into that another time if you want. Yeah. but. <laughs> yes i i do think they need to find a stride with the muppets mm -hmm. um, the i thought that the uh here we go on that tangent that we like to go on um <laughs> i'm not doing it and i <laughs> all right fine we're leaving that aside make a note we're doing muppets yeah. in the we can okay. easily talk about the muppets for an hour or two um so yes, Jollywood Nights, you know, there's so many great things there that mm -hmm. you can do um, that I definitely think that uh, it's that it's worth doing. Um, and my wife and I, like, at first I was kind of like, you know, it's something I'd like to do because I like to do anything Disney, but it's not something I'd get excited about. But in this case, mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Like, we were watching some coverage the other night about it, and I was like, okay, wait a minute. Like this, this is cool. I do want to do this. Um, so, at some point, hopefully, in the next couple of years, I'll get down there to do that. Um, that would be cool. It would be. So, you mentioned Epcot, and Epcot is an animal in itself. I feel like you've got the International Festival of the Holidays going on. This is one of those things I you can't do it all in one day. Nope. There's, you, you just can't. And it's it's typical to an Epcot festival where you've got all these things you want to try, uh, you know, tasting type things. Um, but every country has their own Santa teller and they're mm -hmm. telling the you know some sort of Christmas story. Um and i mean wow like we got over and saw the one from norway i think if there's any of them that you watch and i've watched a few of them on tv that's the only one that i've seen live but if there's one to pick that would be the one to pick because it's funny it's entertaining and you know like 
we took Kristen and Kylo over to it and they had no idea what to expect. And they, they had loved it. They thought it was great to just see that. And it's just kind of this informal person comes out and then the other Santa character comes around and it's just, it's funny. It's entertaining. Definitely something to check out. You know, we were able to just stand there and it's a 10 minute thing drinking our soda, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, it was excellent. And we did candlelight processional that night with John Stamos or as Pepe, yeah. Le Pew, or is that Pepe Le Pew? Wow. That there's a, no, as Pepe, the prong from Muppets. It's a king prong. King prong. He would say Juan Stamos. So <laughs> That was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, but but also pretty pretty endearing. So it's it's okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, I think the four of us were just crying our eyes out the whole time that he was out there doing that. Uh, it's it is quite a sight to see. Um, you know, set aside the religious side if you want. Um. The performances are amazing. The narration from him was terrific. I, and I'm only pointing out here, he's not even doing it this year. Take any narrator you can get and go mm -hmm. see this show because every narrator is putting their heart into it and every performer up there is putting everything they've got into it and it's just incredible. And it's a ticketed event. No. Right? No. No. It's done in the American Gardens Theater, which is right. in, in the American Pavilion. And there is a standby line. Or in the case of the night we went, the uh dining package line was even longer, it seemed. Um, I can't guarantee that. I don't know for sure. I didn't go and look at the standby line, but um when we got to Morocco, they were already lining people up. That's how far back, and they were. There's a spot where they had them like had this line like three times wrapped three times, and <clears throat> by the time we got to the theater, because we didn't get in line until about half an hour before. So, I'll preface: if you do the dining package, you're guaranteed a seat for sure. But if you um, if you wait in the standby line, you may not get that seat. Well, by the time we got there, they were letting standby people in. So we were fighting with those people to get a, a seat at that point. We still got a good seat, but it was back a little further than we would have liked. Um, so especially with a more popular narrator, make sure you get in line a little earlier, you know, maybe even an hour would be good um, just to get you in there a little bit quicker. Um, so anyway, you know, the performance, it's just incredible to see and well worth the time and the money you may have to spend to do it, but no, no ticket unless you do the dining package. Yeah. And the dining package, if I remember correctly, is not, unreasonable you're gonna end up spending food you're gonna end up buying food probably and so if you get a nice meal usually it comes with a you know or it's it's a little bit of an add-on but not not horrendous yeah um, i think the the upcharge is roughly 15 dollars. yeah package um and so we did garden grill um that was a fiasco because they had it was i think it was overbooked at the time mm. we went but um they do have a a la carte or a like a walk-in so the day mm. of if you want to rope drop um regal eagle you can go and i think it's like a 40 dollar bill you can get a meal and a dining package ticket um so that's the cheapest route to do it but like i said you have to rope drop it and get over there right away on a John Stamos mm. type of day to or an MPH. I mean, if I imagine if Neil Patrick Harris does it, it, you might as well just 
I mean, like that's the that's the whole trip if you're gonna get there for Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would think so. Now he does three shows; they all do three shows every day. So, um, you know, like you can't you do have a shot, but like if you're doing standby, you might get in line at four thirty, but you're not getting into until the seven thirty show. You know, it's <laughs> something like that. You know. So just be prepared. think I mean, about that's how- when you bring your phone and you do the game, <laughs> yeah. you know, or, or you sleep or something. I don't know. My, my standing in line game at Disney is, it's not as strong as it used to be. <laughs> um, it's, it's funny how we can wait in lines nowadays though, because we're so used to it from doing things at Disney and finding ways to pass time. So, right. Right, exactly. You figure it out for sure. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so Epcot definitely need to check that out. Like when we went, so when we went last year, we had two days. We one day was the party, second day was Epcot, and then we went, went home. Epcot was prioritized for that extra day because of everything going on there. Um, yep. Yeah. We, we missed Jollywood, um, because we went home the day that they were doing that party. And, you know, I, I'm glad we didn't do it last year. Cause I probably would have been upset with what I had heard from it, but, you know, looking at what they're doing this year, I think it's improved to the point that it's actually worth doing. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So moving on animal kingdom is not to be left out. Um, if you go this year, Santa, it will be meeting and greeting in Dino Land for the last time because we're losing Dino Land at some point in the next year. Pour one out for Dino Land. <laughs> but you can meet Santa over there. Um, the other one that we would really like to see is the Merry Menagerie, which are these incredible animal puppets that mm-hmm. are typically like blue um they have that christmas theme or holiday theme and um you know they they're very interactive they act you know the actors are actually making them want to like you forget there's an actor working this mm-hmm. puppet right so definitely something to check out uh at animal kingdom if you're there um okay do you resort hop do you like to go see the resorts while you're down there i I want to pretend I would do that, uh, but like, but ultimately, what I end, what we end up doing a lot of is being in the parks. You know, I, I don't want to sound. I, I feel like I've sounded a lot like it's just nickel and diming, and it's not. It really isn't. Um, if you del- if you'd have been able to listen to our twenty five minute conversation about before, you know, before we press record, what I love about Disney. Is all custom orientated that being said it is still a very pricey ticket so you know often what we do is stay off property or stay um at a at a timeshare that you know we were able to to steal away from my mother or something um so we don't stay on property that often uh and when we did last it was covid so you couldn't resort up but i have always wanted to go see the gingerbread house at the at the is it the contemporary they have a gingerbread display i can't remember it's a castle this year i believe um but the gingerbread house is at the grand floridian right Uh, and it it's really cool it's really neat to see that um all built up uh we Mm -hmm. got to see them working on it while we were there um and it was complete on november 1st the day we were leaving um and if you go this year, it's the 25th anniversary. So make sure you pick up a sticker. Um, they do have some 25th anniversary merch now that they didn't have when we were there. But they have free stickers at the front desk. So we picked up picked up a couple of those. We were pretty excited. And and I mean it's it's a gingerbread house, so you can or you can't eat that specific one, but you can eat it. They do sell the shingles and they do, you know, you can't mm-hmm. have 
part of the gingerbread that's there. And you get your hot cocoa and it, it's perfect, right? Um, the other thing that we'd I'd want to do is get the golf cart and drive up and down Camp Wilderness um, and see all the holiday decorations out there. But yes. again, COVID. So, <laughs> but, uh, resort hopping is one of those that I'd love to do, but you know when you're when you're far away. I mean, part of what this podcast is about is when you're far away. It's hard to. Um, it's hard to prioritize resort hopping over actually being in the parks. Certainly. So I'm with you. Uh, I, and we'll have to have discussions on how you vacation versus mm-hmm. how I vacation because everyone does it differently. Everyone um, does. Yes. And we have always scheduled at least one day off. And more recently now, we are doing one day in a park, one day off, one day in a park, one day off. And we're hitting resorts um you know part of our trip last year was to get to contemporary get to wilderness get to grand flow um polynesian and see all the different christmas Mm -hmm. decor in those spots and then the morning before tammy and i had to catch our flight we it was funny we took our stuff from pop century and we wheeled our suitcases right onto the Skyliner and went over to the beach club. And um, we checked our beach club stuff, our, our stuff at uh, guest services at the or bell services, I guess, at the beach club. And then we walked around there and over to Boardwalk and checked out all the stuff around there as well. Um, the beach club is really cool. They have a gingerbread merry-go-round. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah, it was, it was so neat. Um, they had, I think four horses on it. Um, you know, those shingles are, are up on the top of it, hidden Mickey's all over in it spinning. It does work. Mm-hmm. It was really cool. Um, yacht club, they have a, uh, 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 train set uh village you know like mm. a christmas village set up and that was really neat to see and then over at the boardwalk they have another um another uh gingerbread house type of thing that it's smaller but um still really intricate and detailed and uh it was really really fun to see that as well so um there is so many so many things to see there and i know like the animal kingdom lodge has stuff um i'm sure riviera has something going on you know we couldn't get everywhere um but we did hit the big ones so Mm -hmm. which which resort had the weird clown pool was that boardwalk that is the boardwalk yes and now it has the keister coaster slide i think is what it's called (laughs) as long as it's not the weird clown because that was another reason we wouldn't go. <laughs> then, but now the weird clown's gone. So we'll the weird, uh, yeah, the weird clown is gone. <laughs> All for the better, mind yeah, you. But the, but the scary nanny chairs are still in the lobby. Mm. So don't 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 you fret. <laughs> <laughs> don't fret. You have we you have uh you, you can have weird clown or weird scary nanny chairs. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think all the gingerbread stuff that they do in these resorts are definitely worth checking out. Um, it did, you know, the morning that we went to those three resorts, uh, we had breakfast at the beach club. We actually, we got breakfast. We sat down, had a nice leisurely breakfast. Um, and then we, we walked all the way around that lake to get, Mm over to the boardwalk and, and beach club or yeah, club and all that. We did the whole walk and I think we did it, you know, taking our time in the lobbies and taking pictures and looking around and, and exploring. I bet it took us an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be a long mm-hmm. thing. And if you're vacationing like I do, you know, you can take time to sleep in, you can go to your pool, you know, go do this resort hopping for a little while and come back or make it even more of a thing and 
a, make it a progressive dinner that we that's a lot of what we've been doing with our resort hopping now is get an appetizer at the first place dinner at the next place dessert at the next one you know like you can do something like that so yeah that's that's i i think i would enjoy something like that so my travel well, partners think... maybe not so much <laughs> that's just because they haven't done it yet so oh yeah that that's that's it <laughs> Um, I will caveat with we went on a Saturday night and I've been hearing it's been kind of crazy this year too with trying to get to the Grand Floridian. If you're taking the monorail there, expect it to be busy, expect to stand. They're crowding as many people into that monorail as they can to get from point A to point B. And so put your patient pants on. I remember there was a line to get onto the monorail when we were leaving the Grand Floridian. It was not, it did not take that long, um, but it's intimidating at first. So just be prepared. You know, another trick, if you want to spend the cash, is a minivan is a lot of fun to take. Um, yeah. Or if you don't want to spend the cash, just grab a lift and head over there. Um, you can do that for 10 to $15 a lot of times. So. You know, the one thing about Disney, especially Walt Disney World in the winter time, is that you kind of just have to have a plan and stick to it. And, you know, roll, pick the things that you want to see, but then you got to prioritize those things. You know, if you're resort hopping, you got to say, we're going to get to the Grand Floridian and we're going to sacrifice this, this, and this to get there to see this, you know, amazing. Uh, gingerbread sculpture uh, if you're gonna you know like for me <laughs> this is weird but for me my thing is taking a picture with gertie it's it, it's weird but that's the thing so we all, like, have we all have a thing so if i don't go to hollywood studios on that day or to take it to, to get that picture and we're there during that time then I need to have planned better. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I think we've hit quite a bit of holiday items mm -hmm. here at Disney World. So, um, anything else we need to add? I, I'm going to add one, th one honorable mention. And I know that it's, you're primarily a Disney World podcast, but since I'm new here, um, if you <laughs> decide you want to go to the other side of the country and maybe you want to see uh, the Haunted Mansion overlay with um, The Nightmare Before Christmas, that is amazing. It's, it's one of the best, coolest things I've seen in a long time. And I don't like that movie. I'm not a big that movie fan. But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and they do all the same things, right? So 31st is Halloween, November 1st is Christmas. And they have all the Christmas things. So it's, did you pause me? It's a different park. It's a different vibe. It's a different, you know, all thing. But it's still Disney and it's still fun and it's still wonderful and you get the benefit of walking in Walt's shoes or at least the shoes that – it would be weird to walk in his shoes, but you walk <laughs> the steps that he walked. Um, and it, yeah. it was a good time. It was a good time. And they they just have Christmas. There's no party. There's yeah. no extra. You know, it's like the parade during the day is Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. and it kicked off just this past Friday, um, the 15th. Um, so, you know, like you can go and you can enjoy a full day of Christmas at Disneyland if you want. And they also have something going on over at, at DCA all day long as well. Mm -hmm. I have told people on this show that my dream job at Disney would be to be a toy soldier drummer at Disney California Adventure. So nice. Nice. I would and I can confirm the Baymax bread is super delicious at San Francisco. <laughs> super delicious. Perfect. Perfect.
Melissa Pilgrim is our choice for your next Disney vacation. You can reach her at a magical pilgrimage at gmail.com. We thank her for her support. And thank you to everyone watching and listening. Thank you, Stuart, for helping me out. Um, like we said, you're going to be on here a little more often, so I'm looking forward to it. Nice. Uh, remember, we have ep episodes every Tuesday, and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. As a bonus, leave us a comment, and we'll read it on the show. As we like to say, some live close. But others don't. So let's talk about it. We'll see you next time on Miles from Main Street. <laughs>